Gabby, what are we doing today? Today we're doing a very, very exciting vehicle. This is the first 2023 Kia Nero EV. Um, the trim specifically is the Premium Plus that arrived to our dealership. We actually got two of them in the exact same color. And this car belongs to one of our subscribers. So that's super exciting. I'm not sure if you're watching right now. I don't want to expose his name either, but congratulations, this is your vehicle. But if you were considering a Kia Nero EV, we finally got them in here. Um, we're gonna show you full exterior, interior, everything. Yeah, and this is kind of an exciting car. And mm -hmm. Gabby, Very why, exciting. <laughs> why do we do these videos? We do these videos for three reasons. So number one, if you own a Kia or a Hyundai vehicle, we want to go over all the tips, tricks, things you may have not known since you bought your vehicle. Number two, you may be considering buying a car in the near future. We want you to consider the Hyundai Kia brands, mm -hmm. and we're going to show you why. And, and lastly, <laughs> number three, um, if just you just like <laughs> our customer right here, yes, if you're going to buy a Kia or a Hyundai, buy it from us. Buy it from us. If, if you, you live, live in Ontario, Ontario, Canada, that is. <laughs> so of course, we'll do our typical walk around and um, answer your guys' questions at the end. However, I will show you how to join a live video if you are watching this in the future and want to catch our next one. So we go live every weekday, Monday through Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You just want to go to our YouTube channel, which is the Kia Hyundai channel. I might have to head back. Oh, no. Oh, no, no. <laughs> so, yeah, you'll click on our channel. Then you'll click on today's video. It'll load you in. It'll look a little something like this, which is kind of crazy. And then on the right, you'll have this live chat box. Here you can ask us questions. You can make comments. If there's anything you may want to see on the vehicle again that we may have missed, let us know. Because at the end of our walk around, we'll always circle back and go through all these questions here. Now, with that being said, we got quite a few of our regulars on. I'm ready. Are you ready, Pat? I'm ready. Let's go take a look. I'll grab the key too, that's important. So, of course, Kia Nero fully redesigned, even the plug-in, uh, plug-in hybrid EV and then regular hybrid, they all share this new body style. With your EV though, and your plug-in hybrid, you'll have your charge door just in the front. Let me unlock it first. So this is a manual charge door. I actually prefer having the charge in the front or the rear of the vehicle because it makes parking into your driveway or um, garage so much easier, plugging in super easily. We, of course, have our new Kia logo. This pink color is called Mineral Blue, and it looks phenomenal. Um, even in the sunlight, it just sparkles. It's so, so gorgeous. We have a front parking, sen parking sensor, oh my gosh, radar sensor that's going to pick up vehicles ahead of you, and that's also going to work for your forward collision avoidance. So this is stuff that you may not exactly see working, but it's great when it gives you a warning, and it will act for you. So pedestrians, cyclists, of course, other vehicles, um, it will provide you a warning and then break if necessary. This is also going to work for your smart cruise control to monitor a distance of the vehicle ahead of you. So you have four different preset settings. You can change them and it'll go all the way up to a stop in traffic, which is super helpful. For our headlights, we have this brand new design. I mean, everything's brand new on this vehicle, but I really love the look of it. I'm going to turn on the headlights real quick. On the premium and the premium plus, you get a mix of LED daytime running lights and halogen main headlights. So let's get this on. May as well turn the vehicle on completely. There we go. Okay. So here you can see we have our LED daytime running light, almost a heartbeat-like design, similar to what we have in our K5 and other Kia vehicles, and then a halogen bulb in the for the main headlight, sorry. <laughs> so really striking design. It looks so, so good. We still have that beautiful tiger face into our, our grill over here. Looks very, very good. Then for wheels, these wheels are standard on all trim levels of the Nero EV. They're 17 inch alloys. Um, these are meant for EV vehicles. They're going to help reduce or not reduce, increase range. Um, and then another thing we have added to this vehicle that was not in our last Kia Nero are these C pillars. So they do have, they channel your airflow, similar to an Audi R8. It's, it's their sister cars. <laughs> They're so close. Um, and we'll also take a look at these roof rails. So we have flush roof rails. This is available on the premium plus and up, so you won't get this on the premium. I do want to talk a little bit about horsepower, torque, and range. So the horsepower on this vehicle is 201, and then the torque is 188 pound-feet of torque. Your rated range for this vehicle, Q on rated, is 407 kilometers. So that is an increase from our last Kia Nero. Um, I do have it reading at 426 kilometers of range right now, though, on a full charge, and we're still in winter. I mean, we are inside right now, but even outside, it was still reading way over its um, rated range. So that's very exciting. Another thing that's super exciting is we now have a power lift gate on the Kia Nero. So this is available on the Premium Plus and up. You have a trigger or touch soft, soft touch point right over here that opens it up. 
You can set the opening height, so especially if you have a lower garage or clearance is limited, all you have to do is press and hold here. So you'll manually shift it to wherever you'd like it to open, press and hold for three seconds, that'll save it as your setting. Now I'll have Pat quickly zoom into, <laughs> sorry I have it lower now. <laughs> But um, we got a good amount of cargo area. And then of course we do have a little bit of a frunk which I'll show you guys soon. Under the floorboard, we have actually a really good amount of room and our mobility kit. So not a real spare tire, but we do have our inflator patch kit. Um, I would, do you think we got room for a spare under there? What do you think? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, because this can be a little bit higher, right? Or removed. Yep. So you could put a spare in this vehicle if you'd like. Um, the rear seats do fold down. I'm going to fold down this side for you guys to show. So it's a 60-40 split. There's your 60, and then you guys can imagine the 40. Lots and lots of room. They really, really changed the Nero. So it has a longer wheelbase. It's wider, it's taller, and it is longer. Um, it looks completely different. I'm really, really happy with the new redesign. Let's close this up. And then you'll also notice on the back we have our circular parking sensors. So just all along the back bumper here. This is of course gonna beep when you get too close to anything. Now you can turn them off. Let's say if you do end up putting a hitch or bike rack or something on this vehicle, you don't want it to beep constantly. You can quickly press it off with the touch of a button inside the cabin. Now let's take a look inside. I'll make sure Pat does a good walk around as you go around. Cause yeah, completely new body style. Um, it doesn't share the same platform as the EV6. I will point that out. This is on the K3 platform which the Nero was previously on. However, they revamped it. Okay, take a look inside. And at quick glance, you do have a manual passenger seat, but we do have a power driver, so I'll have Pat come around in a second. But these seats are very similar to what we have on the EV6. They have our hook at the very back of your headrest. So it doubles as a bag hanger, coat hanger, just anything you may need, keeps stuff off the ground. They are, of course, designed for weight reduction, but they are still super, super comfy. The Premium Plus trim is where you'll get the power driver seat. So you can see we can adjust the bottom of the seat and the angle of it. There we go. The backrest. And then we also have lumbar support controls right over there. So super, super comfy. This vehicle is also equipped with a heat pump. So if you live somewhere colder, like us in Ontario, a heat pump will drastically improve your range in winter conditions. Um, it's just going to recycle some of the lost energy from the battery. On the left side here, we have our window controls and our mirror controls, so super easy to use. That's pretty standard. But one thing I did want to point out are these beautiful door handles. I really, really like them. You do have the option of a Harman Kardon sound system on the limited trim. So that, of course, will enhance your, um, your sound experience. However, we did test out the speakers yesterday, and they sound really, really good even with the stock speakers. On the left panel over here, we have our brightness adjustment. We also have a button for our power lift gate. So if you have someone else loading stuff in the cargo area for you, first of all, lucky you. Second of all, you can just press this to either open or close it. And then we have our traction control. So to quickly turn off your traction control. <laughs> One thing that is standard in the Kia Nero are these two. So you get two of them, 10 and a quarter inch display. So you'll have a digital instrument cluster and a digital center main infotainment system. Now I'll have Pat come around. You're free to sit in the car, Pat. <laughs> So on these clusters, first I'll talk about our um, drivers or instrument cluster. We of course have our speedometer. No tachometer because this is an EV, but we do have, once he closes the door, there we go. We have our power and charge band. So you'll see when you're using a little bit more power, similar to when you're on high RPMs on a gasoline vehicle, and when you are building charge back into your vehicle. So we do have these paddle shifters that are meant for regenerative braking. You can decrease the amount or increase it on the fly, and that's gonna recycle some kinetic energy and will give you a little bit more range built back into your vehicle. You do also have iPedal, so that's another thing that this vehicle shares with the EV6. iPedal allows for one pedal driving, so you don't have to worry about the brake pedal. Of course, if you need to stop right away, you still wanna use your brake, but it will lit off as soon as you let off the accelerator, take you to a slowdown and then to a complete stop. So once you master that, I don't think you'll ever use your brake pedal again, unless it's for emergencies. <laughs> now, take a look at our wheel. So very, once again, very similar to the EV6. One thing I don't like about the steering wheel is that they switched <laughs> the controls. So usually we have Bluetooth and media controls on the left and driver features on the right. So that took some getting used to. I got in and I started pressing this. So why isn't it changing my menus? But after a week of driving, you'll be totally fine. So let's talk about driver assistance first. 
On the left side, we have our button to turn on our cruise control. Now, if you have all your conditions and the highway drive assist turned on in the main cluster here, this will actually trigger highway drive assist as long as you're on a recognized highway, but it reacts the same as cruise control. Here you can set your speed, so increase, decrease, or pause and restart your cruise control. And then we have our following distance just underneath like I spoke about. So once again, four different levels, of course, from closest to furthest. And then you can decide what's comfortable for you. The vehicle will maintain a set distance and slow you down, speed you up as the vehicle ahead of you moves. Just underneath there, we have our drive mode select. So here we can cycle between eco, normal, and sport and check out how it changes my gauges. So in sport, we have a very sporty look, feels almost like a race car. This is gonna amplify the power on your vehicle. So it will consume a little bit more energy, but it'll be a lot of fun. <laughs> so if you, I don't know, you really gotta make it somewhere, this will take off. It'll be quite nice. It's also gonna stiffen your steering. And then when we switch it back to eco, it's gonna lit off the throttle, not lit off the throttle. You might have to lit off the throttle, but it's gonna dull it down a little bit. You'll still have tons of power. Of course, with an EV, all your torque is instant. So you won't feel sluggish at all, but this is great, especially if you're really trying to get the most out of your vehicle, get somewhere and not have to charge as much as possible or save it for home. This is gonna be your way to go. It's also really good for the city. And then normal, that's just your normal driving conditions. It's good on the highway, it's good in the city. It's good range regardless. So you'll see now we're reading at 413 kilometers of range. I'm just gonna switch it back into sport to show you guys how it impacts. There we go. So now we're at 400 kilometers. So it will consume a bit more energy. <laughs> now we'll take a look at the right. We have our Bluetooth and media controls here. So mode will switch your media mode. You can have this go to Sirius XM, AM radio, FM radio, Bluetooth audio, whatever you use and whatever you like best. The talk button beside is going to be your voice commands or voice recognition. So if you have your phone connected to Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, it'll use that assistance. So whether it be Siri or not Alexa, but Google. Google Assistant. <laughs> Google Assistant, yeah. <laughs> Whoever she is. Um, so you can click that and go to their voice commands or you can have your car's voice commands, which will just be your regular navigation. Underneath here, we have our volume controls and then a phone button. This is going to be to answer or answer phone calls and then the button to the left of that is a favorite. I have mine set to be an end call button, but when you press it, it'll take you to this menu where you can choose whatever you'd like it to do. So the custom start button on the steering wheel, right now it's set to none, it's not gonna do anything, but let me do it to be EV. There we go. Now when I press this, it's gonna take me to the EV screen on my main center console here. So it truly is just an empty button. You can set it to whatever you like, whatever you find yourself going to most often in your main menu, it's probably the best thing to do there. However, I really like it for end call. It just makes sense since it's right beside answer call. That's about it for our steering wheel. I will mention it's synthetic leather wrap. So this vehicle has absolutely no animal products. It is cruelty free, free in that sense. Um, so it's recycled plastics, eucalyptus fibers for the seats. Um, we also have PET, so recycled plastics for a headliner and just everything throughout the vehicle is all, they're trying to make it as eco-friendly as possible. So of course no emissions, no gas, right? But everything else they wanna make as eco-friendly as possible. So that's really, really nice. And the EV6 is very similar. So they did the same thing with their seats and their dash and everything there too. So Kia, good on you. <laughs> now on our main screen here, this is what your home screen's gonna look like. We'll slide over to the right and here we have our menus. So like I showed you guys earlier, we have our EV. So this is only gonna be in the Nero EV. The PHEV will have its own version of this. You can see we're at 100% battery percentage. It'll show us, oops our closest charger, and then how far we can go with our climate off. So right now we are in sport mode. That's why it's looking at 400. Let's put it back to eco. Look at that, 425 in winter. <laughs> you can also set your next departure and your scheduled charging. So if you get home from work at five, but you only want your vehicle to charge at 7 p.m., you can set that there. Then it'll follow those charge times. However, you can totally override it if you ever need it. Let's go back here. We also have our map because this vehicle does have built-in navigation. I will point out that both of these screens are standard on all the Nero trims, so you can get the entry-level premium and still have all these features in the screens here. <laughs> we also have quiet mode, which will mute the speakers in the back, valet mode, which will block all your navigation info, so your home address and everything won't be saved um, if you ever do have your car in valet, and then climate. Now this is very similar to what we have in a lot of our newer Kia vehicles, mainly the EV6, the Kia Sportage, and this is our dual climate and infotainment, dis not display, but control Buttons. panel, yeah. Controls. So these are soft touch buttons, not soft touch, but 
what's the word for them? Soft keys. So they do give feedback whenever you press anything. You'll get that beep there, but it's not a real button. Now, a lot of people don't like this because they're worried about turning the heat on when they're trying to turn up their radio or something. That's why you have steering wheel controls as well too, so you can turn your radio up on the fly. But you can also preset this to whatever you use more. It's super easy to tell when you're in climate because this will be illustrated as blue and red, so hot and cold, right? It's easy to turn off, and then it's easy to go back to your infotainment and media controls. So here I can go to my map without pressing map up here or set up whatever I need without scrolling through my screens here. So once you get used to it, it is very, very simple to use and a cool trick. Some people know this, some people don't, but if you want to preset, let's say climate to always be on a default to on, all you have to do is press and hold. It's about three to four seconds and it'll stay as your default and you can always change that later. Now, another thing that this vehicle or this trim level introduces that is only on this and above is this wireless phone charger. So this one, they changed it from the previous Nero. It now charges faster. It's gonna let you know when charging's done, which is very, very cool. And it has cooling fans, so your phone won't overheat, especially being a black surface. If you're driving this in the summer, the car gets so hot. So that's gonna cool down your phone, make sure it doesn't overheat. So it also has a grippy surface. So if you make a sharp turn or anything, your phone won't fly away. We have a 12 volt up here as well. A USB in the center, this is what you're going to use for Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And then a USB-C which charges faster just to the right. This little icon here will light up when your phone is charging. You'll see it has an amber light and then green once it's done. Here's something that might be a hot topic. We have our center and it is piano black. Piano black is stunning but it does produce fingerprints so definitely keep a terry cloth or a microfiber cloth in your little storage compartment here. That's an absolute must for you guys. <laughs> Now let's talk about what's on here. Of course, we have our power button. I really like how they added this garnish alongside it. Um, if you ever see me review Hyundai and they have the kind of crystal-like um, light shift or light knob, you know I love when they add just extra little stuff like this. It just makes it so nice. Then we also have our heated seats. Sorry guys, our lights just turned off. Let's turn the interior lights on. Our heated seats, our heated steering wheel, and then Pat also has a heated seat, three different levels. Turn that off for you, Pat. Here is our parking sensor, so if you want to quickly turn them off, and then our parking camera. So when I press this, it'll give me a live footage of whatever is in my backup camera. And then nothing's triggering it right now, but if I were to back up closer to the wall or the garage door, these are our parking sensors. So those will light up. It'll be green once you're close enough that it starts um, noticing, and then it'll turn to red once you're getting dangerously close. Not dangerously, but very close. <laughs> we also have an electronic parking brake and auto hold. These cup holders are retractable, so you can pop them out if you don't have any drinks in here. And then you can push to bring them back out. Super cool. It's really, really good if you have um, any sort of bigger water bottle, because you can just adjust this to what you need. Or if you like to put your phone in here, it makes it a little easier. I will quickly show you guys the key fob since I got it with me right now. So we have remote start in this vehicle. Not gonna start an engine, of course, but we'll turn on your vehicle and we'll put the um, last saved uh, climate control setting. So if it's summer and you had your AC on, it'll turn the AC back on or vice versa for winter. We also have lock, unlock, our power tailgate, and our panic button. I was really surprised they didn't use the new um, Kia Telluride key, but it's still a really nice key. It's not too big. Um, a lot of people say the key looks huge, but it's actually very, very standard. And it's a very refined, it's a pretty looking key as far as key looks go. <laughs> now I'll turn these lights off and while I'm up here, I'll show you guys these buttons here. So we have our tow truck button and our SOS button. Tow truck will, of course, call Kia Roadside Assistance, which is 24 hours and all throughout North America, by the way. Also free for five years. And then SOS, which calls emergency services. Now that will automatically trigger once the vehicle senses there's been a collision. So that's great to have. But if you ever need emergency services for something else, you got that there. Um, I will also point out this vehicle has Kia Connect. So that's Kia's telematic system. It allows you to start your charging, see your charge, um, charge percentage, lock your car, unlock your car, start your car. Anything you wanna do with your car, you can do it from the phone. It is super easy to use and the app is faster now. So if you're an old user of Kia Connect, it's changed. My car starts within 10 seconds now, which is huge. If you told me that last year, I would've, you're lying. So <laughs> Pat's looking at me like, yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> they changed the programming so that when you go yeah. into the app, it pre uh, wakes up the car. Hey, that's so, awesome. So that when you give it a command, it happens so much faster. Yeah, they I was took so our surprised. Feedback. Hey, um, <laughs> We've got some ambulant lighting yep. here. Yep. So can you change the color on that? You can. So let's just turn the car back on. We'll scroll to setup over here. And then vehicle. And then lights. And then ambient lights. And then hold on. Oh, not brightness. 
So right now it's on Golden Insight. It'll give you these presets with their descriptions, what they do for you. But I always go to Set Custom Color and turn it into this purplish, uh, almost oh, like yeah, black like cool. color. Isn't that awesome? And then you'll also notice it changes the uh, center of the shift by wire. So that's pretty cool. Whatever color you like, really. If you're not a fan of it, you can turn the brightness all the way down and it's barely noticeable. Um, but it is very nice. It makes the cabin feel so, so premium and adds a little bit more personalization. So however you feel that day. If you're very angry, you could do a red, <laughs> like blue for sad. Um, I will also point out while we're looking at the shift by wire, it's self-centering. So you may or may not notice this. So I'll go to D for drive. Oh, actually, I'll turn the car on first. Hold on. There we go. <laughs> So I'll go to D for drive, and then it takes you right back. Then press P for park. With our EVs and plug-in hybrids, if you actually open the door um, while stopped, the car doesn't have to be in park, it'll automatically put into park, which is quite nice. Quite good safety feature. Um, it also has forward collision avoidance, like I mentioned. You do have blind spot detection, so you may not be able to see it, but there is a little icon that'll light up if there is a car in your blind spot, and then lane follow assist. So that'll keep you centered and follow the road ahead of you. Even if you uh, lose one side of the road, if you're on a country road, it'll still create an imaginary lane and keep you centered. So it's a very smart system. Definitely recommend driving one of these and testing them out. I think I'm gonna run to the where the sensor is to get the light. There we oh. go, lights are on. There we go. <laughs> Let there be light. <laughs> okay. Let me get that seat up first, actually. So to get it up. Oh, oh I put you the seat put your all the way seat back. back. <laughs> a good op opportunity for us to <laughs> show how the front seat adjusts. <laughs> All right, so this is a manual passenger seat. If you wanna bring it a little bit more forward, you just grab between your legs, there's a little bar. You can also adjust the height of it. So if you're a shorter passenger, you can bring it up and bring it down. And then the backrest, of course, comes in. I'm always bracing myself with my arm because I've been folded. <laughs> All right, so that should work now. Here we go. Now I will bring this back up. You'll see the seats have a little bit of a recline to them. So I'll have Pat show that real quick. They are very comfy and it's an artificial leather and cloth mix. So I really like how the cloth portion is where you actually sit because it allows you to sink in a little bit more, making these seats very, very comfy. So this is me back here. Now I did move the seat up quite a bit, but I'm gonna sit behind where I was before. You will see. There's a lot of room back here. So I remember the uh, 2020 Nero's, 2021. Um, it was still spacious for a crossover, but this is completely different. The floor is completely flat. So even if you sit in the center seat here, there is absolutely no hunched here, no hunchness. <laughs> um, I have good room beside me, so I'm not too close to my side passengers. Um, the backs of the seats being so thin, in a good way, <laughs> provide a little bit more room. Headroom is fantastic as well. It does feel very, very open, very spacious. Now the backings of these seats are quite interesting. I'll have Pat get a little closer to take a look. We have USB-Cs built into the backs of the driver and passenger seat. So USB-Cs, a lot of newer phones are coming with those cables instead of the regular USB. They charge faster, they charge much, much faster. So it's really nice that we have updated technology in here. We also have air vents back here. And then the very backs of the seats have these, same as the EV6, these plastic, um, seat back covers so you can throw whatever you need back there it's protected so if there's any paperwork or even like a phone or anything no one can see it which is really nice and like I mentioned earlier these seat backs double as hooks so you can hang a jacket there or a bag and not have to worry about anything being on the floor so very very convenient very comfy one last thing I'll show is the center or middle seat it does have a cup holder armrest and tucks right back in so super super comfy I really like the back seat of this vehicle Lots of room. <laughs> Pat, we might get you to take a seat back there to show what an adult looks like. <laughs> not that I'm not an adult, okay. but. <laughs> I'm willing to do that. <laughs> okay, so I am uh, six foot two. Um, there is probably six inches above my head. Mm -hmm. Certainly ample leg room. Yeah, no issues. Yeah, you're like sprawled out right now. <laughs> yep, it's good. It's comfy. I could sit in the back and not have a problem. What are your thoughts on the uh, C-pillar? So the Aeroblade C-pillar. I, I think they upped their game in styling versus the previous model Nero, which mm -hmm. styling wasn't the strong point. It was efficiency. And in this, you get 
You get both. So you'll see, oh, I don't know if I can get my phone close enough, but there is airflow. <laughs> so it'll channel the airflow past your vehicle, giving you maximum efficiency. So we've got lots of questions and comments. Why don't we go ahead and check take, them out? Yeah, let's see if we can dialogue a little bit. Um, someone said you should point out that the USB-C's are power only. To use CarPlay, you need the USB part. Yes, so there is a USB port in the center. If you scroll back a little bit in today's video, we had a USB in the middle, which I mentioned is for Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, and then to the right of that, we get another USB-C, which is for faster charging. So you get both. So Dale said that it charges 18 to 20 times faster. Is that accurate? I don't think I, I realized think so. that. I don't know the exact specs between USB-C and USB, but whenever I charge my phone with my USB-C cable, oh my gosh, so much faster. Interesting. So okay. much. Thanks for that uh, comment, Dale. Um, someone asked, what does it sound like? So it is an EV. It's not going to sound like much. However, when you do have this vehicle in reverse, or um, if you're just driving very slowly in a parking lot, it will produce artificial noise, and that is, by law, we have to have that in our vehicles because there's no engine. Um, if you're in a busy parking lot, no one will hear you coming. Just a little scary. <laughs> um, Pat, I like your suit. You look like a lawyer. <laughs> My dad's a lawyer. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Gabby, can you call Kia and force them to add blind spot monitoring to their base model Forte cars? They will listen to you. Kevin's, I don't think they'll listen Kevin to you. Kevin says to call up Korea and get them an EV5. I'm sure we'll have that car in Canada at some point. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, someone asked, does the Nero have a new chime? Let's check it out. I'll turn it back on yeah, and uh, throw it into reverse. I don't think so, but try it here. I'll, I'll the, get I'll you the video. camera. Um, we also had a question about what tires are on it. So these are Nexon. Oh, I'm shooting myself. Goodness. <laughs> Hold on. There we go. These are Nexon tires. Um, let me see the size. They're 215, 55, 17s. Okay, that's the startup noise. Nope, it's the same as our regular uh, chime. So it has that little beep, beep, beep. Would you just shoot the dashboard driver oh. display for somebody? Yeah. <laughs> okay, you got it on right now. So your speedometer on the left, of course. Your open door signal on the right, but uh, that usually isn't there unless the door's open. And then in our main console, you can choose between all our different menus. So you can see your tire pressure. You can see where you're at in your lane. Your speedometer or a digital speedometer, you can also see your drive info. Um, same thing after charging as you would in a gasoline car after refueling, then your accumulated info. All right, the bottom left, you'll have your range, auto hold, your brake, so it automatically triggers your parking brake. And then we have our consumption in the center, as well as what drive mode we're in, and then this is our odometer. 32 kilometers, this vehicle did go on our road test. Make sure it's inspected. All right, let's hop out. Uh, I think Angel's asking about the mirrors if they're manual, like oh, breakaway. Oh, these, these ones aren't power folding. But However, they are main, you can yeah. manually fold them, yeah. Ooh, the beeping. Um, the limited trim does have power folding mirrors, so whenever you lock your car, your mirrors will pop back in. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Um, are you guys taking orders for the 2023 Nero HEV? When is expected delivery for that model? Oh, you... I believe they're all building them. Like the first build was EV, but I believe HEV and, and plug-in hybrid, uh, they are in production now. Uh, having said that, Canada is getting, the top volume is going to be EV. Mm -hmm. And so um, HEV is, is a, a lot smaller um, build and supply for Canada. So. It's not going to be easy to get hybrid. It'll be a little easier to get uh, mm -hmm. uh, to get EV. Someone commented about the fact that we've got a plug-in hybrid right next to us, and that is actually Gabby's mom's car. <laughs> it is. <laughs> and so we have gotten a little better supply of plug-in hybrids. Like, um, I mean, she did wait. She ordered it 17 months ago. Yeah, and she's so, an employee, so she didn't yeah. get special perks. <laughs> so it was it was pretty. I mean. We're getting them, but it's not coming fast. Like we got offered two or three more uh, yesterday to fill orders and stuff. And so, um, you know, it's happening. Like we're, mm -hmm. we're getting them, but it is not fast. Um, All right, so we're just gonna go through some of the comments and see if we've got anything. So Steve May said, I rarely use the dash controls for my radio. I always use the steering wheel controls, so I would not have a problem with this. 
I like the color too. Yeah, whenever I go to change my volume or even to turn off my volume, everything's accessible on the steering wheel. I right. never touch my main screen ever. That's the beauty of the cars. Like the ergonomics are really great. They, it's yeah, very it's driver designed friendly. so that you keep your hands on the wheel and eyes on the road for safety. So mm -hmm. someone said beautiful key, and I agree. I love this key fob. I think there's so many other manufacturers that still have outdated and ugly key fobs, and it's 2023. Kevin's given us the economic <laughs> update. The Fed just raised interest rates by a quarter point, and the Canadian dollar is rebounding against the U.S. dollar. Interesting. Yeah, I guess they were anticipating up to a half point, maybe staying put. I'm not surprised a quarter point. I am curious to see what the U.K. does, because inflation, I think, hit 10.1%, if I remember correctly, from a headline I saw. So, yeah. Uh, someone had asked, can you please show the V2L feature? So this vehicle does have V2L. Um, you can use it from the charge door port or on the limited trim, you'll also have access to it through the seat. So two different options for V2L. Uh, we can't really show it in today's video, but me and Charlotte have I, done a video dedicated to V2L. I thought V2L, like as far as the adapter comes in the model up though. It doesn't, yeah, it'll it come doesn't with come it. in this model. Yeah, it won't come with this model, yeah. but you can still use it. I, I also thought that highway uh, drive assist was only in the top trim. No, only for number two. Highway drive assist two. Two, okay. Yes. <laughs> Pat. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I haven't driven uh, the car yet, so. Yeah. We literally just got it sold, but we have something coming that we can drive in a week or so, so. Um, let's see. As far as supply, that's always a question on yours and what the timing uh, is. The, the first batch that we got were, were part of the pre-order which I think was in October, and so they're coming in now. Um, we do have some customers that ordered after theirs that we're, we will start getting allocation. So I would expect for EV right now, I, I think it's roughly six month wait. Um, you know, that's subject to change because it depends on how quickly they ramp up production for Canada, but that's what I think based on what we're seeing right now. Um, I briefly want to talk about another interesting feature that's on this vehicle and it's standard. It's called utility mode. So if you're parked for a very long time or even if you're camping in your vehicle, you can draw power from your car without drawing it from the 12 volt battery and having your actual high voltage battery. So um, I was about to say V2L. Utility mode will allow you to power whatever you need. You can listen to your radio, everything. If you're just sitting in your car for two or three hours. And it's pulling from the EV battery. Yeah. Interesting. And now this vehicle and the EV6, they also have sensors that are going to monitor the amount of charge that's in your 12 volt battery and it'll draw power from the high voltage battery to top it up if needed. So it won't let your 12 volt battery die essentially. And that's what you'll see like an orange light on your dash for. Have you oh, ever seen that? Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so that means it's using the big battery, not the 12 volt. Yeah. The big battery to charge the little battery. Okay. Yeah. I, <laughs> I saw it once in my garage and I was wondering what it was. Thank you yeah. for <laughs> thank you for sharing that. Um, Diego asked, are we accepting orders for hybrid? Yeah, we are. Mm -hmm. um, um, someone asked, does the PHEV have a utility mode? And the answer is no. So only our uh, fully electrics. Um, I don't know if you have the option available over there, but I highly recommend the gray interior rather than the black if available. It's stunning. So we don't have an interior option here. We just get what we get <laughs> kind of thing. <laughs> I mean, it's easier for us to order when there's less choices. Like yeah. you're more likely to have the right car in stock. So Kevin said if Kia could get the EV6 wait time down to six months, that would be great. Because mm -hmm. VW just dropped the heat pump out of the ID4. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's interesting. A heat pump, uh, if you're driving an EV, I kind of recommend it. You know, just for efficiency and, and comfort in our cold weather. So Yeah. Yeah. Um, usually referred to as the traction battery, yes. Um, hello guys, do you speak Spanish? Maybe you could say some words. <laughs> Hola. <laughs> Hola. <laughs> I, no, I'm sorry, I don't speak Spanish. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, let's see, I ordered my Runway Red Sorrento PHEV S SX, I'm guessing, October of 2021. I got it seven weeks later, a huge surprise, and I definitely see now how lucky I was, given the wait times people have had to deal with. Yeah, you just hit the sweet spot. We had a yeah. couple of those where it just happened to be the right color and coming at the right yeah, time. Yeah, I remember I had but, a customer that ordered red and it came in so quickly, and then my mom, for example, which is one of our first orders, Yeah. she just got it. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Um, hello there, what's the wait time for Nero Hybrid Sportage Hybrid? Thanks. Uh, I mean, everything I say is wrong, but... Oh, <laughs> that's so reassuring. The, 
I, I did say earlier that the number one volume trim is going to be Nero EV. Hybrid is our lowest volume. And so uh, we, I haven't seen a ton of orders come in on Nero Hybrid yet, though. Yeah. So I, I think right now, probably six months, but I could be wrong. Um, as far as for, and, and it all depends on trim and if, you, like if you're flexible to any color. If you only want one color, then it, it's tougher because, you know, that's, you're only on one list instead of three. So. Um, hey, Pat, any news on a Brantford Genesis dealership? Hmm, that's from Hank. No news. <laughs> no news. <laughs> it's not looking too good. <laughs> um, let's see. Do any of the Neros come with the power sunroof? And yes, they do. So the limited trim on the EV has a power and wide sunroof. So not one of the super tiny ones. It's a very good size roof. And we'll have one of those landing in about a week. Mm -hmm. So um, let's see. So we've got 158 people on. And what? Listen, we... Uh, 54 likes. That's what I was just going to say. If we could get some <laughs> likes. So, I mean, we invest in doing this channel. And the goal, of course, is to is to sell cars and to provide good content. Mm -hmm. And the way we can do that is by growing it. And how we grow it is by you guys commenting, reviewing our channel, uh, liking it. <laughs> and so if we do okay, then we appreciate your like. If you don't like us, that's okay. Then don't like it. We understand. That's okay. <laughs> Kevin hit the like button We're used six to times. it. <laughs> okay, that's awesome. Yeah. Kevin uh, made the, six different YouTube accounts to like our video. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, that guy's um, smart. <laughs> someone asked, where are y'all located? And we are in Brantford, Ontario. And that's in Canada. Right. And <laughs> home of Wayne Gretzky. Yes, yes. Home of Alexander Graham Bell, the inventor of the telephone. Yep. <laughs> home of Brantford Kia. That's probably one of the coolest on the list. My home. <laughs> <laughs> um, 75 likes now. Woo! Thank okay. you, guys. <laughs> yeah, thanks, guys. That's great. Um, Angel said, you guys are amazing. I wish I can send 20 likes at once. Thank you. <laughs> Um, Pat, I got my Hyundai Accent today. Great. Known as the Verna here, first car sedan lover. No Kia in my country, so Hyundai. Where are you? Let us know what country you are. Yeah, no Kia. That's crazy. Yeah, um, some countries. They Kia's just don't care. Hmm. Kia's doing really well in Canada, though. Like, uh, oh, yeah. We were just reviewing the 20 day report, and right now we're out selling a, a bunch of the imports, and it, it's just a great brand. And, you know, Hyundai obviously is doing really well. And, It'd be interesting to see whether or not Kia can beat Hyundai this year mm -hmm. or this month. Um, in the U.S., Hyundai and Kia are really close. In Canada, Hyundai is about a third bigger. So um, we love to compete with our sister stores, but I don't often win. <laughs> um, Pat, Kevin said six likes because you have an EV6. And I was about to say, how do you like your EV6 GT? You've been driving it for a, a bit now. Yeah. Like <laughs> um, so way quicker than I thought. Like I, I, I tried it just to see how, how fast it was. And I put my left foot on the brake, my right foot on the gas all the way down. Try to launch it. <laughs> tried to launch it. And I absolutely laid a patch of rubber. I smelled like rubber for about an hour, but oh it was gosh. fun. Yeah. Great, great car. <laughs> yeah. um, I was late to the party. Apologize if this was mentioned before, but does the new Nero support wireless CarPlay and um, car key? So I'm guessing by car key, maybe you mean digital to touch? Yeah, which is in touch. the top trim. Yes. So this one still has, you can walk up to your car and press the button to unlock it, but it does not have digital key to touch. Um, and then your other question for wireless CarPlay, it does not have wireless, it is wired, which some people hate, but I love. <laughs> I've been using the wireless adapter in the new one, How? and it's not dropping the signal. And uh, I, I like I it. I can't do it. Yeah, <laughs> I no. cannot do it. And it's fast, so... Um, and yeah, in the car I'm using, it's been pretty good so far. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see. I believe it's called digital key to, yes. So digital key to touch. It's available on the Nero EV limited. Um, I will say my neighbor wanted a Nero EV, but wanted all wheel drive. Yeah. So if you want all wheel EV6. drive, <laughs> you got to go to EV6 yes. and yeah, it's a wait. Uh, we are getting some like. Um, how many narrow EVs were delivered to Brantford Kia first delivery? Will other dealers just get theirs as well? Okay, so um, the first two arrived, and we have three more incoming right now that are not far away. And everybody, you know, uh, the first batch is whoever ordered from whatever dealership got allocated those cars. Yeah, this was the pre-order, though. This was the pre-order. Like so Kia Canada's like, event. So some of those cars that are coming in were from our YouTubers. Um, 
And, but yeah, like they are being allocated regularly. So. Um, okay. Canadian chat. Chapin. Yeah, I'm reading that. You own the dealership. <laughs> Do you get the cars for free for Kia and Hyundai and sell them? They pay. Do you buy them first for Kia and Hyundai? No, we pay for them. When the car arrives, it goes on what's called a floor plan, which is like a big line of credit. And uh, Kia gets their money and we are paying for the cars. Yep. So. Um, Gabby, can you call Kia and force them to collaborate with Apple on an electric car? They will listen to you. I don't know why you think, think they will listen to me. <laughs> I think Apple dumped their, their car. Did they not? I haven't heard any updates I about thought, it. So I thought, I thought they walked away from it and closed that, that down, but I could be wrong. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure somebody will have a comment there, but. Angel yeah. asked a good question. She always asks good questions. Is there a premium stereo in the Nero? And yes, there is. It is available on the limited trim and it's produced by Harman Kardon. Um, larger driver cabin space, Nero EV or EV6. EV6 is bigger. But I will say this is huge. So it is bigger than the Tesla Model 3 by, I believe, 50%. Is it really? Yeah. Wow. The cargo space. Cargo, cargo space. space. Yes. Yeah. That's interesting. We have a Model 3 outside. Yeah. Um, it is so spacious in there. So remembering the last time I sat in the, the previous Nero, it's it's a roomy, ruby cabin. That's for sure. Brian O'Connor like is easy. back to work. <laughs> well, we um, appreciate you uh yeah, you're thank you for us. watching. <laughs> Get back to work. <laughs> um, I don't know if I saw my customer on here or not. What happens to the card you cannot sell? What do you do with it? Oh, we sell them all. Yeah. That's not an issue. <laughs> Never yeah. an issue. Um, they typically sell before they actually get here. Yeah. So. <laughs> uh, Josh, any change for the 2024 Kia Rio? Yes. There isn't going to be one. <laughs> Cargo space. That's so silly. Cargo road. Do you get it? No, you don't get it. Never mind. <laughs> I knew oh. <laughs> Kevin would, would comment on the Apple car. He's saying there's still rumors that they're doing a yeah. car, but they're working on software for autonomous, uh, autonomous Ooh, driving. Okay. My, my customer is here. <laughs> awesome. Oh, great. <laughs> well, there's your car. Here she is. <laughs> Proof that it made it here. Um, I think we're at the 40 minute mark, so we oh, should probably goodness. end it off. <laughs> Guys, any likes that you give us is great. It just helps our channel and yep. gives us, put some wind in our sails to keep doing this. Ooh. But we appreciate it all of you. It makes us happy. Yeah. That too. <laughs> yeah. We like it when we're like, hey, we got yeah. 94 <laughs> likes, 95 likes. What? Do your 96? Yeah. All, All right, guys. everybody. Thank you so much. Um, my customer, thank you again so much for watching and choosing us as your local dealership, even though he lives quite a distance away. So there was very, uh, like a couple other key Listen, dealers. Thank you so much. Yeah. We, we appreciate the support. That's yeah. a big deal. It's a great compliment. It means a lot to us. All right, guys. Thank you again. Thanks, Hank. We'll, we'll see, see you, you tomorrow.